Hi everybody! Welcome to the show. It's Aurorum Kingmaker Season Something, Session Something, Part 1. Um, I think 4 and 10 and 1. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Hi everybody! How are we doing? Correct. Yay. Cool. I do apologize in advance. I'm tired. Very tired. But we have a lot we want to get done today. And so we're going to knuckle in. Uh, we're going to take our break pretty much at exactly uh, 8 o'clock on the nose. Um, uh, so we will be taking a break in about 45 minutes. So let's get started. Uh, before we get started, um, I uh, just briefly just make sure everybody remembers the loud noise, the constant protesting, the um, uh, protesting happening literally worldwide. I mean, we're talking across the planet is absolutely insane. The support is absolutely insane. It's incredible. I don't know about how other countries um, laws and whatnot are working. I honestly don't know what they were to begin with. But here in the US, you do have a lot of things are being put forward. Some of them really, really sad, like really bad. And some of them are actually legitimately really good. Uh, if you look at what Minneapolis and whatnot is looking to do, it's absolutely incredible. So so there's some real change happening. But again, you can't let it up. We have to keep the, the, the movement going, keep having those conversations, so on and so forth. It's important because, you know, um, not allowed to do chokeholds unless they feel like their life is in danger is not a uh, uh, an appropriate federal response. And so they we should probably keep being danger. loud until yeah. we get a better one. I'm sorry, Tish. Yeah. <laughs> they claim life is in danger every time anyway. So yeah, exactly. It, it <laughs> literally changed nothing. They didn't have a weapon in their hand and they were lying face down. <laughs> oh, okay. Cool. That's awesome. Um, all right. Anyways, we will uh, move away from it on that one. Um, let's uh, let's let's get into the game. Um, oh, you guys earned a build point. I didn't even pull that uh, tracker sheet up. Uh, all right. Last session. Uh, Neil, recap us really quickly how last session ended after the whole Jaden thing and all that. Uh, after the whole Jaden thing, we talked a lot. Um... And um, we forgot to fill out the people in prison tab. Uh, yeah, so, uh, and Ray Rain had a little bit of an argument with Ravina upon her return. She is now fixed, uh, luckily. Um, and uh, eventually, it, uh, Ray Rain calmed down. Uh, one smoothed things over a little bit between them, and then they had a little discussion in which they uh, mentioned. Um, the devil deal, um, uh, and uh, we we noted that this is the first the first advisor to be told of the devil deal. It was, and she seems to be uh, interested, not keen like let's use these things immediately, but certainly interested in making sure that we understand that we have these in our pocket. But what was described to her, though, it wasn't entirely true. Was that once the de once the deals are used up, that Rayran's soul is forfeit? You know what I mean? That's um, it's actually not entirely true, but she was told that. So he I guess he feared that was the case. Yeah, well, he we feared that that was the case. So uh, let's uh, ho uh, in in hopes that she actually has some degree of value for his soul. Hopefully, she wants to actually you know not use up both of them anytime too soon. But that's fine either way. Um, uh, that's kind of how things finished up there. Um, I, if I remember correctly, that was in an evening. That part I don't remember, because you you didn't have um, uh, Will's character come back yet. He came. No, he did. He came back in the meeting with me and Ravina. That's they literally, he literally walked into the meeting like, "Oh, hi." <laughs> um. So, uh, when you guys uh, uh, so the next day, let's kind of flashing forward to the next day. Because um, I don't think there was anything else you needed to do in that immediate moment. Flashing forward the next day, you guys actually receive reports saying that there is a, uh, uh, it's like a scout report. So, you know, like uh, somebody on a horse riding fast and ahead. That there is a uh, uh, a large group of people traveling west across the Deer. Um, they actually tro cross through um, the Varen area. And so like a scout was sent from Varen. I was sent over set over us a couple of uh, 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 messengers to get the word to you oh, guys shit. that a large group of people traveling west across the deer. Um, west from Varen? Yeah, from probably from east of Varen. 
So, um, uh, based off the description uh -oh. of the report, when it's delivered, uh, Nathan, you come to the firm quick understanding that these are your people. Oh. They, they finally arrived here in Adir. So, it's probably going to take them a, a, a day or two to get here. But when they do arrive, obviously, you want to facilitate the meeting with them and so on and so forth. Yep. Okay. So, that being said, um, I don't know if there was... You guys had sent Mog um, with uh, Hansa's kind of aid, like uh, staying in the Western Keep, but, uh, to kind of guide him a little bit. Um, but she's staying in the Keep again. Uh, sent Mog to go find out where the ore is, so on and so forth. Um, you had Elliot write down a whole crap load of notes. You had a bunch of lore dump that you wanted to give to the uh, rest of the party. About the elementals, um, I don't know if there was anything else that you really needed to go over immediately. I'm studying lore. Oh, also probably like a day or, a day from now, most likely your general will be showing up because he had to walk back instead of take the teleporter back. Because oh you know. shit, I I do have something I need to tell them. Sure, cool. <laughs> well, I guess. Um, so this will be the next day. You can imagine your characters Nathan wake up in the morning. Have you have some breakfast, so on and so forth, and then just immediately you guys haven't been to all together. So uh, a council is kind of called to reaffirm that everybody is fully filled in on the situation. So you can imagine you've all eaten, and the, the council is called. Uh, everybody's sitting there, um, except for, uh, your general. Even, um, you can even have, what's his name from Hod Gwen there? Um, uh, Edric. Um. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. And Arthur's not there because he's with Leon. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. All right Didn't continue. they get back already? No, no, no. Remember, they left. Uh. The reason oh, why okay. word was sent is because he sent word through the teleporter, but he couldn't travel that way. Because otherwise, the people in the keep would know. Yeah, 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 that's right. Cool. Okay. Um, uh, so, yesterday, I, I meant to say, and things came up, he'll look to both one and, one and Rayrin. Um, we talked to the slumbering queen about getting the support for the army. And it seems to have gone positively that she seemed to be willing to supply roughly a dozen excellent when will they be arriving she, <laughs> she, like on a pause. Huh? she need she needed what is it a week or whatever it was oh that's right yeah she needed uh, she said she needed a week to get them ready which went in line with everything else you guys were saying beforehand um, so, so, or you said a week, so, uh, so she's like, cool, have the general swing by and grab them, uh, at that time. So, unless, of course, you were having them come here, but that wasn't established, so. Cool. Uh, I don't think there's any, I, I didn't have anything more to say. Oh, no, I did. Did I tell them about the teleporter yet? No, I don't think I did. Nope. <laughs> okay. Uh, another thing. Uh, while uh, we were studying the elemental stuff and the the elemental, uh, I made another discovery. Uh, one, I believe, a room you opened had a giant sal. It was a salamander statue, wasn't it? It was a um, lizard correct, statue. Correct. Correct. Giant salamander. Okay, salamander. Yep, with a bit of armor on uh, their chest and a big spear in their hand. Yep. A, a large salamander statue. Uh, it was uh, almost radiating heat. You yeah. Just... And what did the fire elemental call it? Uh, I think he. I think Scott. He actually told me it was um, snuggly abusive or whatever. Correct. Yep. You do know that. Yeah, so I would just say, uh, seems to be some type of primitive temple to uh, to a. Uh, Deity called Snaga, the abusive. I think it's a bit more than a temple. I sensed a magic coming from inside the statue. I assumed it was what was producing the heat, and it likely is, but not in the way I was expecting. I, Upon touching the statue, according to Elliot's point of view, turned into magma and was absorbed into the statue. At which point I woke up in a similar room in Vala. 
Turner. Yes. Uh, there was also a snake person there. Uh, he attacked me, but after I fended him off and he realized I was trying not to attack him, he stopped and we conversed. And uh, it seems that they've been trying to figure out how to use it for a while. And it's a network of statues. I don't know if it's just these two, but it felt like there were... I, I don't know if there was more. The magma went down and connected to a, a line. It allowed transport between these two. Uh, I didn't seem to have much control over it. Upon touching the statue, I came back. Um, but yes, uh, we I, we've had we had guards placed on the door, right? If I remember right. Um. You, no. No. Not. The, not that statue. No. I thought we said we were gonna. Uh, alert oh yeah. I suppose. I suppose you could. Put, I mean, it's in the bank. So I mean. Yeah, we're gonna be like <laughs> put guards outside this temple, and the guards are down like, "Fuck, it's hot down here." Yeah, no, oh, no, no. Uh, who like, has this job? Further out, but like, if there's only the one, they probably be already guarded anyway. So yeah, okay, that's fine then. Right, and yeah. my my I, elemental I would... is down, but with the well, my Elon's with the elemental, so yeah, any, it sees anything. I, okay, I so told big, them to big thing. Um, something is coming from the other way. <laughs> snake people is that is that a, a thing that's known? I mean. Now it is because he mentioned snake people. Yeah, but like um, and he, never I believe he actually snake said people before. Oh. And he mentioned uh, a name, Ophios. He asked if I was with this Ophios. Ophios mentioned in. I think he. I think connection to Rena. Yes. Did uh, Ophelia mention him last week? Uh, the, the the name the name was brought up briefly. Ophius, the parent woman that was here the other day, mentioned his name. But did huh. you say snake people? Yes. Uh, he attempted to wrap around me as uh, when I appeared, assuming I was hostile, I, I think. Uh, so, uh, yes, very much snake person. Raren, have you ever encountered any snake people? Before? Oh, is that on? Is that not a normal thing? This is all. There's a lot of. He looks around. It's, it's a, he tries not to look at Kithel, but also there's a little like back to the others. Is like, I I don't know. Have you ever seen? Have you ever seen snake people before? I've certainly never encountered any. Would I have ever heard of any rumors? Or I doubt it because they're pretty no. damn secretive. Yeah, no. they don't exist. It's fake news. <laughs> Clearly, they do. Fake news. Either way, you say he attacked you. Uh, yes, when I said I wasn't with Ophios. Uh, once I didn't. Well, he. The shirt that I wear, if someone was to grapple me as he did, it ignites. And that was enough of a deterrent for him to back off and talk. What? Came of these talks. He's been trying to learn about this uh, transport for a long time, and that he worked with this Ophios. Uh, there was oh, this is the problem with it being two weeks instead of one week when, when this happened. Uh, what else did he say? Wait, did I write it? I I, I wrote notes on the, on the session. Uh. No, I don't think I, I'd... Uh, nope. Uh, Mumley in Valor. That's what, sorry, it was they'll say the, the town was in Mumley. Uh, was where uh, it it ended up as well. I, I would have said that earlier, but I forgot. <laughs> uh, no, uh, other than that, um, once he understood that I wasn't hostile and that uh, I... I knew at least I had traveled through the network. Uh, he was quite curious about how I did it, uh, but he didn't seem hostile after that. He didn't Sounds tell him how rather he did more it. like he intended to kill you once he understood you weren't with Ophius. 
Not he, that he wouldn't have he been might able be to. Hostile. That is, yeah, that is a possibility. Uh, I'm not good at gauging strength. I. He barely hurt me, but. Evidently, I'm not like other people. It doesn't exactly matter so much as intent here. Uh, I don't know. He uh, wrapped around me, but that's all he did. Sounds like you guys are spooning. <laughs> I don't know. He I wrapped around me, that. but that's all he did. Uh, I, I, I don't know enough about their people. I don't know if that is an attempt to... Subdue or an attempt to kill? As far as I know, snakes wrap around as a defensive mechanism. Perhaps to kill you, perhaps to protect itself. If this snake person's anything like an actual snake. From its point of view, it should be noted, uh, I would have just... Magma would have come out of the statue and formed me. That's what Elliot said it looked like from the other side. Okay, so two things. One, there is other teleporters that take you to things that aren't the keeps. Interesting. I wonder if there's any, how many places like that there are around a deer. Having one in the, the middle of Hod Gwen could be troublesome. Um, yes. So uh, I don't the guy, know. The, the snake guy asked you how you came. He obviously didn't know how to use it. You didn't tell No, him. he did not. Uh, I didn't get a chance. I was curious myself, and I guessed, but it, I touched it and came back. I don't that know if it can link to other places. Uh, I will note one thing to the side of uh, what you're saying with the hostility. He did not tell me his name, but he did mention Ophios. Okay, well, the fewer people that know how to use it, the better. I don't know if it's possible, but if I was to try and use it again, I might try and be touching someone else and see if they come with me. Yes, I would, uh, I would ask that if you can, you take me with you. Like I can try. Like a snake person. I I don't know if it uh, I have much control over it but uh, if there is only two exits then that should be where we end up you know when when one says so I can see this snake person what he's actually saying is so I can see this snake person's demise right um, you know, that's a sense of motive thank you so okay. know, <laughs> giving away information thanks yeah, sorry I just want to make sure okay we're all on the same page yeah Okay. <laughs> uh, um, Nathan would also interject and say also while we were down there we found out much more about the elementals and the moats um, we, we found that the elemental is fading I guess as all elementals do they are born to fade um, but the elementals were uh What's the word I'm looking for here? Bridges. No. Well, they are bridges, okay. yes. That, like that, that is true. <laughs> uh, they're anchored to one spot. Um, they are there against their will and were put there by Scott. What's the name of the people? Mole. 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 Um, their fading happens much more slowly since they are forced to stay. Um, our elemental down there seemed to say he hated it and then learned to enjoy it or, or to at least live with it. Um, he is very close to spending his last few years uh, of life. He does say that if we were to visit these other moats, there are likely to be elementals tied to them, and that they might be more hostile. 
He also we know where to... one other one is. Hmm. Sorry, Elon. Oh, it, it's it's okay. He he, it's a small thing. He also wished uh, his own, his main regret was being alone. Uh, I believe Nathan's uh, elemental uh, I Eidolon uh, is down there with with it now. Uh, it is. I told him as long as I'm not in need of my Eidolons, uh, they can spend time with him. Uh. They all, he also talked about how they were used. They seem to be a tether to moats. Um, I remember the angel talked about moats as a, as a, within the moats that it is protecting, right? Do we know the exact area that the angel is protecting? Grishka does. Grishka's traveled it. Okay. <laughs> he hasn't hit every uh, corner because he did get pulled away, but he did. He does yeah. have a pretty good understanding. So, uh, that, how, did you? Uh, is there anything of significance at key points along this distance? And seeing that it's a square at the corners, anybody? That would actually be. Um, that would actually be Elliot and uh, informed. What's his name there? Nathan about the fire one. So if you guys actually like pointing on the map in front of you inside the map room, um, you, uh, yeah, the map in front of you inside the map room, um, it's one of those things where, you know, uh, Elliot can kind of lean forward and be like, well, Nathan, the place that we had discussed prior, and he would just kind of like gesture towards the, um, um, the, the boat. Yeah. And I would just say that was the, the fire elemental. And there is also a um, uh, notes left by Valorin in his research that he did beforehand. Apparently, he had discovered another one. Um, these, of course, were discovered shortly before that time that Valorin was captured by, um, well, I suppose not captured, rescued, I think is the uh, official story, um, by Vigil. Uh, rescued by Vigil from a, uh, a witch or, or a hag or something. Uh, that had attacked him in the woods and um he was only able to discover the two and then by the time that we had recollected him we were falling into war and so on we didn't have time to continue our research i imagine if that at those corners there are moats i, I assume he would have discussed how they work in terms of like what they do um but we don't need to go into that much happy uh, I, I imagine then at the other two corners, there are other moats. Roll a knowledge planes check, uh, Neil or anybody else that's skilled in it. Ooh. Uh, Will, you're able to roll one because you were there. So, um. Damn! <laughs> so, oh, Ilan, you were there too, right? So I'm waiting for Will. I also have knowledge planes as well, so. So, Ilan, you'd be able to point out, based off like what you and Elliot are talking about, that uh, let me switch the the, the view here, um, for the sake of viewers. You all see what we're talking about. Hey, Central. Oh, let's delete Jake because fuck that clown. Um. <laughs> Why are you random on me today, Jake? Stop? You mean like? really have to get me since I got here. I mean, it's because I want to get you, boy. So uh, you would point out and say that this one right here had the ability to enhance uh, acid, and this right here would have the ability to enhance fire. Rayrin, um, it's kind of like Ilan pointing that out based off of the conversations we were having. Ilan could put two and two together. The acid might equate to earth if he had to choose uh, a, a primary elemental plane based off the descriptions that were given to him before uh... while he was down inside the area. And so Rayron's able to kind of put two and two together with, um, if that's the case, very likely right here would end up being a water moat. Right here would end up being an air moat. So most likely that's what the case is. Interesting. Which one did you think would be water? Opposite. Um, this one. Yep, opposite fire. Uh, Nathan would then actually say, just so you guys know, 
I asked the fire elemental if he wanted to be free and for us to figure out, and he still seemed content with living his life there. I did plan <laughs> on freeing him if I could. He suggested that doing that him being tethered like this now is the only thing keeping him alive. Correct. I... He, he, he wishes to continue his days there as he doesn't have many left. But I will say if we show up to another one of these moats and they do want to be freed, I think the only right thing to do would be to free them. If we have it in our means, or at least try. This isn't my area of expertise, so I will defer to you on that. I don't know I what I would like the... to know the purpose of these moats before we do so. Hmm. That's kind of like saying, and he like takes like a sigh and, and, and looks at you again and says, it's like saying, it's like showing up and seeing a bunch of slaves and then saying, let's find out the purpose of these slaves before we free them. Elementals aren't people. They have their own thoughts. <clears throat> Magics are dangerous. You know this. So far, we have perhaps the elements of earth, fire, water, and air. What's to say there isn't another one that centers on us that is positive energy, another one elsewhere that centers negative energy. We may throw things out of balance. The mole were powerful. They are gone, mostly. But this is a remnant of their workings. We should be careful before we dismantle it. Elliot knows that the fire one, for example, it could enhance destructive power significantly. We should be careful before we go about pulling it apart. There was an understanding that we had when we were down there speaking to the thing that they were working around a center point that this location that we're in right now had some degree of significance, that it was almost a moat of its own. I could only presume it would be positive energy. The creature undead... Wait, why would it be people. positive? Well, the creature... Well, let me finish. Uh -huh. The creature that was undead in the basement was unable to pass through the walls. Perhaps they are permeated with positive energy. Mog already explained why that was the case. Yes, he I said it was the material. The material that was triggered from the uh, a huge burst of negative energy. The planes are not laid out flat. It's hard to explain. It's easier to explain as a sphere. If we were looking from a top down, as this map shows, both the positive and negative planes would line up with Curfall. And pointing out that detail, thank you, Ilan. I think it's also important to note that um, if this is true with the research that we had done beforehand, Nathan, Ilan, and I, that there may be cross sections as well. Um, for instance, gesturing towards the, the ones that are oh, believed yeah. to be earth and fire, uh, on this road, which actually does fall within Valoran's lands, there very well may be a moat that exists there too. To one of the, um, what were they called? Quasi? Ma yeah, uh, I've got, I'm bringing up the, the list thing now. Uh, that's the wrong list. <laughs> you found his favorite porns? No, no, it's, it's, I've got the sphere up. Is plural of porn porns? I think it's just porn, right? Like, like that's my favorite porn. Yeah. I watch a lot of porn. Like, well, yeah, it, it has to be I watch a lot of porn because the word would be pornography, and you wouldn't yeah. say pornographies. Yeah, okay, fair. Just, Quasi. Just, uh, clip, just that soundbite of Scott saying, this is porn? my favorite porn. No, no, pa para. Para. Magma is para, so that's para. The quasi are the ones that go to uh, the positive and negative. The yeah. para are the ones that go between the 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 basic ones. Right. And so um it's potentially there's a para elemental moat here as well. 
And then he would just give like a quick explanation of the para and the quasi and the polar versus the um uh the primary or core. Um and then Nathan would say though, he would say, So you say you're not the expert one. And and I'm not necessarily an expert either, but my people are on their way. And we could potentially gain more information from them. Do your people lean towards one element over another? Each person has their own identity. I, I would say that if you were to look at us, the majority lean toward fire, but that doesn't mean that others don't lean toward other elements. Gotcha. He says passionate people with like a smile. <laughs> Elliot, before you do your prodding, I should go see them first. His <laughs> smile falls. <sighs> well, I think it's important to note all the things that we had discussed and the fact that this creature, this elemental that we had seen. Um, actually, um, from what I understand, one, it's not as large as you had originally reported it. I'm sure this isn't the only time you've been accused of that, but it is, um, uh, the <laughs> elemental and it's fading is actually reducing in size. Uh, yeah, so we, we actually learned how, a lot more He says that in game, how... by the way, because he's being playful. <laughs> about the element, how the elementals work. Some of them... Uh, come into existence much more powerful and larger, but they slowly all turn to the same small size before they fade. As interesting as this is, we still don't know the purpose. The reason I was leaning towards this being a positive energy mote is, if you remember, this keep originally hosted a great amount of plant life, and in the entire region around it, Plant life was verdant, overgrown, carnivorous. True enough, but it also was the anchor of a curse. A curse that was planted into the basement. It is possible, if we're looking at this from a 3D perspective, I wouldn't say 3D, from like a, from like a, 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 a perspective where positive would sit above negative, Perhaps the positive was above ground and the negative was within it. And the tree that grew in the basements back in those days uh, pulled from the curse or the curse pulled from the negative energy. Wasn't there a staff connected to the tree? There is. It's actually yeah, rests it's with uh, in the ah. museum. <laughs> have we actually done much? We, we haven't done anything with the room that had the tree in it, have we? Uh, you saw an angel come out of it, and you turned part of that basement oh, into a prison. <laughs> right, okay. We so, really you know, should down there, you have some, that some, tree root more. <laughs> I was just say, you have a couple of your, your prisoners down there like, I have the power! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Realistically, we, we should have taken note of the fact that an angel walked out of that spot exactly. Uh. <laughs> to be fair, though, it was Nathan that saw it, and he was like, oh. Because <laughs> it's already been, like, like you know, built over. Like, you know, they... <laughs> it's not there anymore, you know? Never mind the fact well, that I, huge I roots were swinging around and attacking you guys before. Almost killed you. You know, because you cast spells off of scrolls that were too powerful for you to even try to survive. We did though. We don't know. Yeah. And then even in like the, the like the little tiny leftovers of the tree almost got Val Valorant when he was trying to break it himself. <laughs> the dangerous tree. <sighs> um so it might be worth looking into that spot then where the the, the curse was broken where that tree was. Okay, so Nathan will go and seek out his people, and some of us should check out the 
place where the tree used to go. It's to return to the keep to the west to assist in finding the uh, the ore that Mog desires. Mog already fucked off. So if you go, you're uh, heading out with uh, Hansa. I know he fucked off. You gotta wait for him to report in, I think. I mean, how long is it gonna take? Have you seen a, how big a... that region is? <laughs> this is where he has to go. This is the keep. You might not understand that traveling through mountains takes more time. Yeah, but he's a single guy. He's fine. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's also no, trying to be stealth. So. Fine. Very well. Whatever. Neil's like, I gave you an order an hour ago. Why isn't it done? You asked for a pyramid. Why <laughs> it isn't be... it done? You know what? Just torture this one. Give me another. <laughs> It'll also be interesting to see if there are the para <laughs> moats. If it's here or here. In terms of whether it's a circle or a square fully. Um, Elliot says, I would be concerned if it's that further reach where we had built the fort. Uh, if that's the case, then you have to imagine it's going to be symmetrical. And that would put one of the moats over the border and into Paradell. He says, gesturing to yeah. the north. Let's hope it's not that, then. He says, um, because as you can see, the map actually cuts off there. He's like, the map yep. cuts off here. So I'd, I find it less than likely, but it is possible. This does brim the border as it is. Well. Is that everything we have to do? <laughs> this is me out of character. Uh, I think so. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I believe... It's also been brought to my attention that uh, we are in the possession of a number of criminals who are currently eating our money away in the prisons. I have updated the list. There are two names in there now, but I think I've mis I think we've missed some. I uh, might want to put them in chat and ask. Those. Yeah. No, no, chat gave me these two. The, the, the assassin with no tongue and the Forvin captain of the guard. Yes, he has to be executed. He's... Yeah, he, uuh, he should face a uh, public executions for crimes against a deer. I do not know what he did. <laughs> He's a slaver. Ah. A slaver and a the assassin. assassin. We have no need for a tongueless assassin. He must have been busy. I would have assumed these guys would already would already be executed by now. No. What is it? Oh, hold on. Wait. Five. Four. What did this no assassin do? I can't quite remember. No were given for us to do such Yes, Cthul. I, I, I know. I think uh, there's other things on our mind, but like the Chosen of the Quill has said, they are eating our food and they do not deserve to uh, breathe the air they breathe. A small amount of food, George. Well, the assassin killed, actually killed General Jaeger. So he that is better. He did. <laughs> so he should die for his crimes. Uh, as for the slaver, and, you know, we all know how that's going to go. And he'll look to Elliot. Elliot, what's the punishment for murder? Arguably treason. I believe the phrase was an eye for an eye. Not in my book. Um, Funny enough, I thought that was you that wrote it. Yes, here's my chisel. Nope, um, nope, nope. It's an ale for an ale. Never mind. <laughs> it's the celebratory laws. My mistake. There's a lot of laws here. And what is the punishment for slavery? That I mean, that's a, an Adirian thing. Um, in Adir, people don't tend 
to do well, uh, generally speaking, it's either um, uh, lifetime in prison, which honestly just sounds like uh, a taste of their own medicine, or, um, or you know, execution. Though there was one noted case of excommunication um, on the records. Special set of uh, circumstances there. He looked to write around. Uh, okay. Exile. God damn it. Why can't I ever remember that word? Yeah, excommunication. Like, this is not John Wick. No. <laughs> Excommunicate. God damn it. I always say the word exile. I suppose in that place, the fitting punishment for them both would be execution. I have no arguments, says Elliot. <laughs> um, Ravina says, well, entertainment, I guess, for the people. I don't exactly wish for this to be entertainment. They never do. The assassin, uh, there is no reason to make this public. The slaver, this is a deer and slavery is intolerated. Brett Rock says, how are we doing it? We doing it by hanging? Cause I can, I can make a nice uh, uh, hanger's barrel. Uh, you know, kicks out easy. The heading is what I would vote for. So then I can make a nice little barrel that the head would roll into. Yes, and you're a real enforcer. This would come under your jurisdiction, Red Rock. When you say more or less that he would be the person actually swinging the axe, he kind of. Roll a sense motive, though I imagine Jake just automatically succeeds because he's uh, Jake the Train. <laughs> uh, you know what? Oh, so the two of you definitely note that he seems a little uh, like oh shit! All of you, I uh, see that. See, notice that he seems a little <laughs> like like oh okay. I'll um I'll do that thing with the thing. I don't think that should be a requirement of the role. The people see the Red Rock walking around the town. The, yeah. There's no need for them to associate mm -hmm. him with executions or taking people's heads. Uh, he and seems notably relieved. Who takes that? Ravina says, we can find somebody that has darker predilections and give them the role. Uh, keep one of our guards that has a taste of war that has not quite lost the taste yet. Give him the job. Give him satisfied. This shouldn't war, be something war, to satisfy sadism. Uh, war changes thing. people, and we force them into war, right? Granted, she wasn't a part of the nation at the time. If this well, is... if Red Rock doesn't wish to do it, I will. I will do it then. Um, she says, ah, perfect. Darker predilections, yes. She's <laughs> clear. She's meaning that to be funny. It, it does also yeah. line up with uh, stone gaze, Ravenna stone gaze. <laughs> it, it does also line up with uh, Roga slavery being the crime. Also gives a new meaning to chosen of the blade. I didn't want to think about that, but okay, yep. That's a thing now. <laughs> there was their second attempt at a joke. <laughs> that one hit. <laughs> Jake. Marion already was thinking about that. <gasps> so we get a couple of chuckles throughout the room. <laughs> one looks dissatisfied. <laughs> Ray has a, a coy smile to play across his face. Well, then we will make a reading of this. We'll have it taken care of. Other than that, is there anything else that needs to be covered? Uh, there is the appointment. He looks to Ellen. Oh. <laughs> yes. <coughs> Ellen needs to officially <laughs> chosen. Ravina just starts clapping. Needed. <laughs> there, is, there is no sense part of need, needed. Ellen is very uncomfortable. <laughs> um, uh, Kithul is like. like I'm glad that we all finally under 
understand this. Red Rock is like, not Red Rock, Red Rock's like, what? And, and uh, Edric's like, <laughs> Jesus Christ, Edric. <laughs> Looks around the room. <laughs> Not sure what's happening. Less a restoration on Edric. <laughs> Not actually, but. <laughs> you see, Edric gets on Always do your hat in here, boy. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. I believe it should take place in the Temple of the Martyr. Be fitting. Begin the ceremonies in there, and then perhaps a speech out in the um, out in the open, so all the people can hear it. Oh dear! <laughs> oh, speech is lovely. Well, you're the chosen of Herod. I say that <laughs> you're the chosen of Herod. You certainly must be uh, uh, comfortable giving speeches by now. He says. I don't think I gave any speeches at Herod. At least none that were intentional, in, intended on being speeches. Perfect time for you to practice. Well then, uh, I think um, uh, all of us have adjourned what, what it is that we need to discuss. Perfect. I will make arrangements to travel with Nathan to the east to meet up with Nathan's people. Um, and everybody else has their own tasks, he says. Slowly closing up his book and looking to, um, uh, to get going. Shaking his head, looking at him, making eye contact. Avoids eye contact and continues doing his stuff. <laughs> Do you not have assistants to hire? Um, he says, yeah, but Nathan has to help me with making those decisions, so we'll just make it a road <laughs> thing. Don't worry about it. Uh, Is it a, I, a, I could use help writing a speech. Um, oh, then you should get a Rayron. Yeah, R Ravino should help you, or Rayron. <laughs> and um, actually, uh, people have engagements at exactly 8 in the morning, our time or whatever time it is in other oh, countries. Yep. So let's take a break really quickly and we will be back. Bye everybody. Bye. 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 DJ Bicep. <laughs> 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 <laughs>